Cody Coleman. I mean, what do you think? Is that amazing or what? <laughs> this was like we were there we were at our house and we were watching a list of just literally one entry after another yes. cross over that computer screen mm -hmm. and it was they were wonderful entries remember the soccer player yeah he was great I mean they were cute some too. cute cute yeah. guys you know <laughs> it's important we got that but at the very last minute actually it was like around 11 o'clock at night on yeah. the last day of the contest an entry comes through and it was uh, from a, a girl named Liz yes and she lived in the South, and she was submitting a guy named Solomon Rexius. And do you remember how we were just so, we were amazed. So yeah. what, was it that, what was it that really struck us? Remember, there was something she added in his entry. She put in a link, and it was leading us to a music page. And I'm a singer, and we both love music, and I think that was the most intriguing. We didn't know... Oh, you know, maybe he could sing good, maybe not. We we weren't really sure about that. And but, we take a look at this yeah. MySpace page, yeah. and we are blown away. I mean, so he is a twin, identical twin, yep. and uh, they sing under the name Caleb and Saul. And in the Northwest, a lot of people have heard of them. You will know them soon enough. They're amazing. 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 And guess what? We actually have another surprise for you today. I was able to talk to Solomon, and I was able to convince him to join us tonight on Karen Kingsbury Live. So give him one <laughs> up. What a crazy life we live when fiction becomes this real, right? I mean, it's kind of crazy. All right, well, what was that like for you? So, I mean, you know, you had your girlfriend, and, uh, you know, she entered you into this contest. What, what, what were you thinking? What were you uh, well, going through? You know what's funny about it is that I actually told my girlfriend about the contest. Um, I'd met a couple twin ladies at church uh, about a year and a half ago, and about six months ago they... Uh, sent me a link to your website and said, hey, they're putting on this contest. And so I then sent the link to Liz, and she, uh, she entered all my information. And my brother took a couple photos of me first, and then, uh, then we entered the information and was hanging out with you and your family the next day. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, this was the craziest thing. So, like, the entries are coming in from all over the country, but Saul's entry right down the street, right? I mean, that was the craziest thing. So that the next crazy. day, we literally met up at a church, mm -hmm. got a chance to connect, and by that night, he was at our house singing. Like, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, we have our Cody Coleman for sure. Kelsey, what about the importance of having a real-life person behind a character like Bailey Flanagan? What do you think about that? You know, the girls, and I think this generation, is they're just really hurting for that role model figure. Um, and to be able to have a Facebook page that Bailey Flanagan is there and giving advice and leaving scripture and just, just some positive influence for these girls, I, I think it's absolutely incredible. And Yeah, too often, I, love I, that. I mean, we have role models that are in the, the media, the entertainment industry, mm -hmm. that are letting our girls down, are yeah. letting our kids down. And I think you're right, that they're hungry for someone who can point them to the truth. Yeah. to scripture mm -hmm. you know and what do you think I mean in terms of you know being a role model you've lived this out in your life I mean um, I'm gonna brag a little bit here my Cody Coleman Saul has 16 books yes yeah, right <laughs> He has 16 books of the Bible memorized. Is that right? Okay. Right, this yeah. is a guy you can go ahead and believe in right? Mm -hmm. I mean this is we have a guy here who kids can look up to they can pray that they will find their real life Cody Coleman because he exists in the persona of a guy like Saul Rexius and a Bailey Flanagan who exists in the person of Kelsey. So it's just so great to be able to have that. What does it feel like to be a role model now for potentially hundreds of thousands of, of readers? You know, it's really cool. For the last few years, I've been training for a pastoral ministry, you know, training to be a role model, someone that people can look up to and um, that I can be a shepherd of God's people. And so this is just another, another step on that, uh, on that way, you know, just learning to what it's like to have people look at you. And uh, it, it's a good pressure, but, you know, you want to make sure that you're really doing things right and living for Jesus, which is the only way to live. Amen. Right? Amen. 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 Saul's had a chance to take a trip to Chicago yes. uh, where he was able to be the cover model for the second book in the Bailey Flanagan series. So it'll be leaving first and then it's learning. And uh, so what was that like going to Chicago and having a cover shoot, getting makeup and all that? You know, it was cool. Yeah, that was the first time that I can remember that I've worn makeup. <laughs> right. um, oh, wow. 
<laughs> but uh, it, was it was really fun, you know, and we had a big team, there were seven of us there, and you don't, maybe you don't realize, but it does take seven people to get one of those cover photos. It's a lot of work. You know, we had the art director and his wife and hospitality, tech guy, <laughs> photographer, makeup artist, and me. So it was, it was a lot of work, but it was really fun. Very good. Well, I'm so excited and I'm so proud of both of you, the lives that you're living and the real life role models that you are. And I'm grateful that you believe in my characters so much that you need them to feel real. And so we have Kelsey and we have Saul, Bailey Flanagan and Cody Coleman. And fictitiously, I hope you continue to follow them. Uh, it'll be an adventure. We have um, some sad things ahead and we have some amazing things ahead with Cody and Bailey in the fictitious world. And in your real lives, I just uh, wish you the best and pray for you to continue to walk strongly in the Lord. Um, next time that you come back to the show, we'd love to see you and Caleb sing for us. Would you be able to do that? That would yes. be great. That'd be great, that. right? Yeah. And Kelsey, thank you for being uh, the co-host on the show today. It's been wonderful having you here. Of course, I'm going to hate saying goodbye as you go back to college. I but know, me too. <laughs> we will have you on the show again. It's been, it's been just wonderful. So thank you for that. Now, coming up, we have the miracle story of the real-life family whose lives inspired the writing of Unlocked. I hope you have your tissues ready for this story. We'll be back after this minute. Kate McCree is a six-year-old Arizona girl battling brain cancer. A special thanks to the readers who helped place Kate as a main character, forever in fiction, in Karen's new book, Unlocked. More than 300 readers gave to the Kate McCray Fund to make it possible for Kate to be a character in Unlocked. Your generosity has helped this family more than you know. Please continue to pray for Kate McCray. Karen Kingsbury Live. Now I've been telling you throughout the show tonight that I would be introducing you to the real life family whose miracle story inspired the writing of Unlocked. Now I write what I know. In my life we are often and have often been involved with Christian youth theater. I wrote about them as CKT in my Baxter Family series and so many of you have come to join CYTs in your area as a result. I remember the first time I met Mitch Thatcher he was pacing back and forth at the back of an audition room, watching practices that were taking place, but only from a very far distance. He had his hood on, pulled tight around his face, and I knew that most likely he was someone who struggled with autism. He was off to himself. He was quiet. Uh, no one was interacting with him or talking to him. And I believe he was really just there because his sister Elaine was part of a show, and she was there for rehearsal. I'd like you now to just give a warm welcome to my next guest, Carrie Thatcher and her son, Mitch. This is Mitch, everyone. Now, over the last few years, I have had a chance to watch a lot of changes in Mitch. But before we talk about those changes and this eye contact that I'm getting right here, which is just so great and love it, um, tell me just a little bit, Carrie, what what that was like in the earlier days before CYT and, and certain other miracle aspects kind of came into the into the scenario of your lives. What was that like back in the days when he would just wear that jacket and, and be pacing? Well, you know. I was listening to Ingrid earlier, and we, we waited until the kindergarten to find out that we were going to be dealing with this for a long, long time. And you would go to things, and even in the classroom setting, he would sit far behind other kids. And I had two other children who had plenty of friends and would go play outside and, and hang out. And he really liked to be alone. And it was a kindergarten teacher who said, you know, can I tutor him? And then realized, you know, this, we've got a lot more going on here. And so... Um, we tried a lot of things. We tried T-ball. We tried, um, I can't even think of all the things that we tried right now to, to help him find a place in well, the world. What were your fears during those early um, days? What? You know, it's something you don't know about. You don't, nobody gives you information. You learn it piece by piece, right. step by step. Right. We went to lots of therapists, lots of 
speech therapists. We went to people who taught him to deal with his, his emotions that were all bottled up inside. And that, the way to do that was he, he would get out toys and play with them a certain way, and that would be telling his story out there with those things. Um, what about heart-wise? What I know, you know, as a mom, like we struggle. I struggle when I see my kids, you know, not picked on a team or right. something so minor, you know, compared to what, you know, you and so many of you out there watching tonight might be dealing with having a child on the autism spectrum. What, what was your heart feeling when you were watching Mitch struggle? All of us, no matter if you have a child with needs or not, you want them included. And to know the only way to make it happen was was taking risks that often didn't pay off, or we have his dad be the t-ball coach so he could be on the t-ball league, because nobody else would, would sign him up. And you dream that they can do something in life, and then th those doors don't open. There's, right. there's no place for somebody like that. It's all, and so and CYT that's the thing, uh, opened yeah, that door. That's the thing that I think we've all watched, and we've seen it in the news, playing out in the news, that there's too many times where a child doesn't fit in for one reason or another and then they are ostracized or left out, cast out, and there's oftentimes nothing we can do. We're praying, we're looking, what is it that would unlock the doors to that child to help them to be included like other kids? Let's go ahead and just take a look at Mitch today. One of the things they have up at Mount Hood is a climbing wall. So he discovered this climbing wall up there and he kept just going up and down that rock and now it's become something he loves to do. He's got a new hobby in his life, he's got a new sport, he does it with his mom. Mitch is the youngest of three siblings. He has two sisters. We were well on to a family of four. I mean, it had been four years, just us two girls and so forth then and then along came the news that we were gonna have another baby and his kindergarten teacher came to me one day and she said do you mind if I tutor him after school and then they asked us they came in with the principal and they said you know we we'd like to have somebody else take a look at him we think there's more when he joined CYT or when he went to someplace where he was on his own he he didn't have that person he was he was his first line of defense he was our first audition this boy who couldn't even take his jacket off in classes. He was gonna go up in front of a group of people and sing. And he had no singing training. I mean, we were, it was a huge risk. And Christian Youth Theater is so wonderful about applauding every kid. And that helped him. He wasn't on stage for a while, but it's like, okay. It, it kind of, it's, like, it's like opening shutters. You open a little bit and there's a little light. And then it's like, well, do I dare open it anymore? Or maybe I'll keep it closed. And the people that make that shutter change are the people that say, good for you. And you're like, okay, I'll keep, I'll keep inching that open. When that curtain opens and they're, and it, you know, you look for that face and they're there and he was looking for us. Even though, you know, they're not supposed to, it was like, mom, you know, do you, do you see, we're here, I'm here. And um, it was so, you kind of wanted to tell everyone in the audience, I know you're here for your kids, but guess what? You know, this is, this is re really remarkable. I think I clapped louder and whistled more when it was time to, to take bows because it was a lifetime bow. It was, we come around a big corner. 